Okay, so in this uh, video, I'm going to prove by induction uh, De Moivre's theorem. So um, first of all, I just have a look at De Moivre's theorem. What exactly is it? Well, we have been talking in previous videos about complex numbers in polar form. So I'm going to have a look at um, uh, this complex number here, uh, which is in polar form, cos theta plus i sine theta times or. If I raise that to the power of n, then uh, it should be r to the power of n cos n theta plus i sine n theta. So in other words, this is our complex number here in polar form, raise it to the power of n. So you raise r to the power of n, and then you put the n in front of the theta here and here. You multiply the angle here by n and n, so you get n theta, n theta, cos n theta plus i sine n theta. So is that true? Well, it is true, so we're going to prove it um, <clears throat> in two steps. And the first step is going to be for n is an element of n. We're going to prove it for natural numbers, first of all. In other words, positive natural numbers, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Now, we're going to start with um, n is equal to 1. So we're going to prove it for n is equal to 1. We're going to take the left-hand side first. So z to the power of 1 is just simply going to be our complex number to the power of 1. Anything to the power of 1 is just itself. So we get r cos theta plus i sine n theta. The right-hand side then is going to be r to the power of 1 cos 1 theta. Remember, we're putting the power in front of the, uh, multiplying it by the angle here and here. Uh, so r to the power of 1 is r. 1 times theta is theta. 1 times theta is theta. So we get um, both of these the same. Left and right-hand sides are the same. So it is true for n is equal to 1. Now, we're then going to use the... Uh, usual method for proof by induction we're going to assume that it's true for some number k so n is equal to k and we're going to prove that it's true for n is equal to k plus one so in other words this here is what we're given that it's true for n is equal to k so in other words or cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k will be or to the power of k cos k theta plus i sine k theta so this is true or this is what we're assuming to be true and what we want to prove is that it's true for k plus one so in other words, or cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1, is that equal to or to the power of k plus 1 cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta? Okay, so let's start then. Um, we're going to do this by taking the left-hand side, and we're going to turn it into the right-hand side. So we're going to mess around with this until we get the right-hand side. If I can do that, then I've shown that it is equal to the right-hand side. So let's take the, the left-hand side here. We have or uh, cos theta plus i sine theta, and it's to the power of k plus 1. That's just simply going to be equal to um, or cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k, power of k there, and or cos theta plus i sine theta um, i sine theta to the power of 1. So all I've done here is just simply uh, split this power up into um, using the laws of indices. I've split this power up into our complex number to the power of k, our complex number to the power of 1 multiplied. So you add the two indices and you get k plus 1 here. So, um, okay, so let's uh, move that on again. Now, we know that this is true. This is our assumption. If you look back at our um, assumption here, this is our assumption that it's true for k. So we raise our complex number to the power of k. It's r to the power of k cos k theta plus i sine k theta. So this is what we have here. We have this left-hand side here. So I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to rewrite this in this format here because I know it's equal, or I've assumed it's equal anyway. So let's see. We have on the left hand side then we have or to the power of k cos k theta plus i sine k theta. We're going to multiply that by or cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to multiply all of this out. 
So I'm going to multiply this or the, the R's first. So that's just going to simply give me R to the power of K plus 1. R to the power of K times R to the power of 1 is R to the power of K plus 1. Now I'm going to multiply all of this out. So I'm going to multiply this by this, this by this, this by this, and this by this. Okay, so we end up with cos k theta times cos theta. Cos k theta times that will give me plus i cos k theta sine theta. That's this one times this one here. Now these two multiplied, that will give me plus i sine k theta cos theta and these last two then will give me uh, remember here we've got an i times an i here that's going to be i squared i squared is minus one which is going to change the sign should be plus times plus which is plus but the i squared will give me a minus here and that will give me sine k theta sine theta okay so let's move that on again and we end up with r to the power of k plus 1. Now what I'm going to do here is put the i's together and put the terms without i's together. So this one here is cos k theta cos theta plus uh, this, uh, no it's actually going to be minus in this case isn't it? That's this, this one here doesn't have an i in it so I'm going to put that one here. So that's going to be minus sine k theta sine theta theta and I'm going to put these two together now and I'm going to take the i outside the bracket so the i is going to be here I'm going to factorize it so it's cos k theta sine theta plus sine k theta cos theta Okay, so next then uh, I'll just write this down again k plus 1 and if I look at um, these two here, first of all, I'm going to use trigonometric identities to rewrite these, this um, here and this here. So I'll do this one here first. I know from my uh, trigonometric ratios, they're in my tables, that um, cos A plus B is equal to cos A cos B. Uh, minus sine a sine b so i'm going to use this trigonometric identity to rewrite this i have a cos a cos b minus sine a sine b i can rewrite that simply as cos a plus b so let's do that this is just simply going to be cos of k theta plus theta that's my a and b there okay and i'm going to do exactly the same here uh, now in this case I have a do I use a different trigonometric ratio so I'm going to use um, sine a plus b sine a plus b that's equal to I know that's equal to sine a cos b sine a cos b I have a sine a cos b here plus uh, cos a sine b I have cos a sine b here so cos a sine b. So I can rewrite this here as uh, sine a plus b. So in other words, sine of k theta plus theta. And that's it. So last line then is just going to be r to the power of k plus 1. I'm going to factorize this here. So I've got cos of k plus 1 theta. I've just taken theta outside the bracket. Uh, plus i sine, again, k plus 1 theta and this is exactly this is the right hand side this is my right hand side here so I've taken the left hand side I've rewritten it until I got the right hand side so uh, the last step then usually you would just write this is proof by induction so you would write uh, something like by induction uh, de Moivre's theorem Moivre's theorem is true for n is an element of n. So it's true for natural numbers, positive natural numbers. So now um, I remember we needed to prove that this is true for integers, for positive and negative whole numbers, and zero as well. 
So the next thing I've got to do is look at uh, n is equal to zero. So I've got to prove that it's true for n is equal to zero. So um, now remember what we want to prove here is that um, or uh, cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is equal to or to the power of n uh, cos n theta plus i sine n theta. So um, let's prove it for n is equal to zero here. So if we have a look at um, the left hand side, left hand side for zero, we'll just get all of this to the power of zero. In other words, or cos theta plus i sine theta. And we want to raise all that to the power of zero. We know that's one. Anything to the power of zero is one. Let's look at the right hand side then. That's going to be or to the power of zero times cos zero times theta plus i sine zero times theta. Well, that's just simply going to be or to the power of zero is one. Cos of zero times theta is zero. So the cos of zero is one plus i times the sine of zero times zero is zero times theta is zero. So the sine of zero is zero. So that's one times one, which is one. So I've shown there that it is true for um, n is equal to zero. The right and left hand sides are equal. So now what I've got to do is prove that it's true for um, negative numbers. So negative whole numbers, <clears throat> and that'll be uh, the proof finished then. So let's have a look at uh, negative integers. Now I'm gonna have a look at um, a number called p, and p is gonna be positive. Okay, so p is gonna be positive. So I'm gonna raise my complex number, or uh, cos theta plus i sine theta. I'm gonna raise that to the power of minus p. Okay, and you know, that should give me, or to the power of minus p times cos minus p theta plus i sine minus p theta. This is what we want to prove. Remember, p is positive, so if I raise this to the power of minus p, a negative integer, um, I should be able to end up with or to the power of minus p and then put the minus p in front of the angles again here. So multiply them by the angles, minus p, minus p here. So I should be able to prove this anyway. So let's see if we can prove that this is true. This is what we need to prove is true. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the left hand side. And I'm going to try and turn it into the right hand side. If I can do that, I've proven it. So let's start with the left hand side here. OK, so we have um, or to the, uh, let's see, cos theta plus i sine theta. And we're raising that to the power of minus p. So I want to try and convert it into this here. So let's see how far we can get here. So let's see. The first thing we're going to do is uh, rewrite it as or cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of plus p. This is just one of our laws of integers. Anything to the power of minus p in this case is 1 over this to the power of plus p. Now, we know that this bottom part can be done. We've proven this already in, um, in the first part of this video. So we know that we can rewrite this as or to the power of p times cos p theta plus i sine p theta. We know that this is OK to do. We've proven that this is true already. So um, next thing I'm going to do is uh, we've got a division here. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of this complex number here in polar form. So this part here is just going to be 1 over or to the power of p. And I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. So I'll just extend that out a little bit. To multiply the top by the conjugate, you're going to have cos p theta, remember we're multiplying by 1 here, so it's cos p theta minus i sine p theta. So we've multiplied the top 
by the conjugate of this. Now I'm going to multiply the bottom part, the denominator, by the conjugate. So on the bottom here, uh, I've already got cos p theta plus i sine p theta. I'm going to multiply it by its conjugate, which is cos p theta minus i sine p theta. Okay, 1 over r to the power of p is r to the power of minus p. Remember, we need this in our in our proof. When this is what we want to prove here, um, we want to prove that this. So we're trying to get to this here. There's an r to the power of minus p in our solution here, so that's what I've got. I've at least got that bit right anyway. So let's see what we can do with the rest of it. Um, okay, so on the top we end up with um, cos p theta minus i sine p theta. Now on the bottom. I'm just going to multiply all of this out. You can probably spot at this stage that it's a difference of two squares, and I could just work it out in reverse, but I'll actually multiply each term out and see what we get. Um, now I'm going to multiply this by this, this by this, this one by this one, and this one by this one here. So here I've got cos p theta times cos p theta, so that's going to be cos squared p theta. Uh, this one times this one here is going to be minus cos p theta theta times this here that's going to be sine p theta and I've also got this i here as well I'll just stick it in at the front here now I'm going to multiply these two that's going to be plus i sine p theta cos p theta and I'm going to multiply these two together now so plus times minus is minus however I'm also multiplying this i by this i Remember, i times i is i squared, which is minus 1. So instead of a minus here, I'm going to end up with a plus. Now, I have sine p theta, sine p theta. That's just going to be sine p theta, sine p theta squared, or sine squared p theta. Okay, so I've ended up with r to the power of minus p. On the top here, uh, I'll just write that out again for the moment. Cos p theta minus i sine p theta. Now this is all going to be over. Now I've got cos squared, cos squared p theta here anyway. Now I've got a minus i cos p theta sine p theta, and I've got a plus i cos p theta sine p theta. It's the other way around, but it's the same thing. Multiplication is commutative, so the, you can just switch these around. So this here is the same as this here with different signs. So they're going to cancel each other out, or I'm just going to get zero here. Uh, so that just leaves me with this here, which is sine squared p theta. Now, almost there. Um, so we have r to the power of minus p. Now, on the top um, here, we wanted a minus p in front of the uh, angle. We don't have a minus p here. We've got a plus p. But... I know that <clears throat> the cos of an angle is exactly the same as the cos of minus the angle. So I can rewrite this here as the cos of minus p theta. So what I'm saying there is um, the, cos, the cos of any angle, let's say the cos of b, is exactly the same as the cos of minus b should get the same solution there okay now <clears throat> what about this one here so i have my minus p in this side so i need a minus p here as well so i also know um or should know anyway at this stage that the sine of the sine of minus an angle let's say p we use the letter p in this case that's going to be equal to minus the sine of the positive angle. Sine of a negative angle is equal to minus the sine of the positive angle. So I can convert this into uh, minus p as well and just change this sign at the front here to a plus. So this becomes plus sine of minus the angle. So minus p theta. On the bottom here I've got cos squared something plus sine squared something. I also know that from my trigonometric ratios here that um, 
sine squared a plus uh, cos squared a is equal to 1. So on the bottom here, I know that this is just 1. So what have I ended up with? Or to the power of minus p times uh, cos minus p theta plus, sorry, I've left out an i here. There should be an i here. i sine minus p theta. And um, that's it. That is our right-hand side. So we've finally gotten there. This is for um, negative numbers, remember. So we have or to the power of minus p cos minus p theta plus i sine minus p theta. So we've done it for everything at this stage. So all, all cases um, are proved. So, um, you know, the Moivre's theorem is true for n is an element of z. It's quite a long proof, but not too difficult if you, um, if you try it yourself or try writing it out um, a few times yourselves, and um, you'll find that it's not too bad.